What's going on, my PT peeps? My Walking Dead family, my fighters. I'm One Eye Bry, also known as PT. Don't know if I'm winking or blinking, but I'm definitely thinking about Fear the Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 16, the Season 6 finale. Great episode of a great season. I think Fear the Walking Dead Season 6 is a very good season, probably the best in my opinion of Fear the Walking Dead. And I do think The Walking Dead Season 6 is the best of the entire universe. So Season 6 is where it's at in the Walking Dead universe. But spoiler warning for all things Walking Dead, we're going to review, recap, break down Season 6, Episode 16. But first, guys, hit that subscribe button and be a valued part of our PT channel, Walking Dead family and community and fandom. Now, the title screen is of Teddy with the missile going overhead and he's got his arms out like he's a cult leader but teddy is gone he dies in the episode but the episode starts with rachel and her truck is broken down and she's only three miles away from the coast where the submarine was you see rufus you hear baby momo in the car she breaks her leg she gets a bad compound fracture and you would not be able to put any weight on that leg but she decides to kill herself and she becomes a walker and there she is at the end Rufus is tied to her. She carries the baby on her back, baby Momo, and Rufus takes the baby to Morgan and Grace. Daniel overhears someone on the radio, mission over the radio, it turns out to be Althea, coordinates where to go, and it's pretty cool that the CRM helicopter picks up the group, and really everybody gets to safety besides Raleigh, Riley, Rachel, so don't be an R name here, Teddy and Dakota, they all die. But Sarah, Daniel, Luciana, Jacob and Charlie are trying to find shelter in a basement in this store, but there's walkers there so they can't go there. Wes, Raleigh, and Riley are in a car. Raleigh says that he got information out of Riley, but it turns out that Raleigh is a spy, a mole. When in doubt, put a mole in the series, right? The bombs are getting closer, so they decide to let Raleigh take them because they're not trusting Daniel's information about the transmission over the radio because of what happened before. But Rowley is driving down the road and walkers are in the road and he swerves into them. The brakes go out, so they have to stop. I've never seen so many things have problems with walkers. They should just be ripped apart by the vehicles. But either way, the brakes are out. Sarah's got to do some quick welding. They kill some walkers. And as they're repairing the MRAP, Daniel overhears a similar line that Riley says, and Riley says the same thing about a phoenix rising from the ashes. Daniel understands that Riley is the spy. Boom, takes him out like that. It happens really fast. So Riley is killed as Riley is shot by Daniel. Riley tries to escape from the MRAP. Boom, Charlie takes out Riley. So like that, Riley's gone and Riley is shot in the stomach or chest, I guess the chest. He dies later on, but Charlie saves the day. And another young girl, well, I guess Charlie, the same young girl who killed Nick, shoots another male character. That's what they do in this series, evidently. But our group is saved. They decide to go to the coordinates where they hear the transmission. They go trust Daniel now, and Daniel was right. Well, not initially. Riley's laughing because he's still alive. Daniel rips him out, and it's pretty great. Daniel got to love him. They decide to leave the MRAP, and they're looking around. Again, there's no helicopter at first. So you're like, okay, what are they going to do? All hope is lost. Charlie even says that like, oh, there's nothing here. But then there is. The helicopter shows up and we don't see the pilot. We're guessing it's Isabel or someone that Isabel trusts. Wes decides to take out his spray paint. Reminds me a lot of Simon in season six, episode 16 with the spray paint can where he spray paints the X on the back of that guy for some reason. But he decides to write, this isn't the end. But then Riley gets up. Well, Walker Riley, because he's a walker now, and it's just going to say, this isn't the, because there is no end if someone reads that. But like I said, the helicopter shows up, and I said this in another video when I was breaking down the different clips that were going around, because this episode was seen in Germany and a couple places before in the United States. But this is the group that is saved, and yes, I know Sarah and Charlie are there. I forgot to mention them before, so it's six people instead of four, so all these people survive. Althea's on the radio, and it's a good thing, but ultimately we don't see Al, and we don't see this helicopter pilot. So is it Isabel or someone else? We don't know. Where is this person taking our group? Are they going to join the CRM or somewhere else? I would assume they aren't, but you never know. Are they an A or a B? Will CRM be a big factor in season seven? They better be. And I hope we get a time jump. Dwight and Sherry find a farmhouse or a random house and they decide to go into the house, but Sherry is willing to just die here. 
because she's with her love, Dwight. They both survive, so it's great. They talk about the pretzels and the beer and there's nice callbacks and how they wasted so much time while Sherry wasted so much time about the past. And it's a nice moment. Overall, the episode does a great job with what each group was doing during Morgan's transmission. Well, radio transmission while he's in the sub because he stayed back. Dwight and Sherry go into the house and they find a couple that's there. Well, yeah, family, a man, a woman, and their daughter. And they find out that there's people inside their bunker or their cellar or their basement. That's a nice bat there with the Negan colors, the black with the red grip. Pretty sure that's an Easter egg and a callback for sure as it's Sherry and Dwight find these people. But Dwight tells the family that they're gonna get their bunker back because we know that the end is the beginning people are in there. They tie a rope on the back of a horse, also to the doors of the bunker, cellar, basement, whatever you're calling this thing. Dwight smacks the horse in the butt, yeah, and the horse runs away. Dwight and Sherry easily kill the people in the bunker, the end is the beginning people as they randomly come out shooting, it's pretty hilarious. But everybody is safe here, including Dwight and Sherry as they get in the bunker, so again, more people survive. Then we're on to Dakota and Teddy, and they're in the vehicle and they're driving to this location. It's disguised as they're just going to die here, but Teddy had other plans. John, Dory, and June show up for an epic showdown that's not so epic. John forgives Dakota, June forgives Dakota, everybody forgives Dakota for some reason, but Teddy tries to talk his way out of things, and he's kind of working at it. He's kind of doing what he does, but then the bomb gets closer and closer, and June and John try to talk sense to Dakota. Dakota has her gun at John, and then June, and then John, but then they find out there's a bunker here as John picks up the gun that's knocked away from Teddy. So Teddy was bringing Dakota here to hide in the bunker. When the fallout happened, they would both survive. Teddy says that they were gonna go back to the sub and launch more missiles, but I don't know what to believe. It doesn't matter because John and June go into the bunker and Teddy and Dakota are left outside the bunker here. So everybody gets a bunker, you get a bunker, you get a bunker, everyone gets a bunker. But Teddy is shot by Dakota and it's pretty cool. Again, Dakota and Charlie, they just take people out and it's so easy for these chicks to do it. But Dakota's not messing around. Boom, boom, Teddy is gone. She's like, I'm gonna stay right here and basically take my medicine. And it's probably one of the best deaths there is in this series. She stands there, the bomb goes off, boom. She's gone, right? She's ash, she's dust. It's pretty cool. Dakota is gone, it's great. It's finally like enough of this annoying character. She gone, now Strand. We gotta get to Strand. Strand gets away on horseback and he randomly finds this building. It's like a business building or I guess condos or something. It's not the stadium. We don't see the stadium at all, so I don't know what that report was about filming. But ultimately, Strand comes across this new character, Howard, who is a collector. He's got stuff from the Alamo. He's got guns. He's got bourbon. He's got he's got a nice place here, but he's by himself. He had a family, his wife. He has the pendant or a similar one with the religious symbol on it. And it's a character that I wonder what's going to happen with in season seven. I like this actor from The Mandalorian, so hopefully he sticks around, but we get a new character. And also Strand lies to Howard, saying that he's Morgan Jones and that he had to do things to survive and he was willing to die, but he wasn't. He lies to Howard. The bomb goes off, but they're a safe distance away. And again, everybody survives. The main characters have the plot armor and everybody survives. The main characters survive, I should say. But Strand talks with Howard and it's a whole big setup. Like Strand's alive, he keeps surviving, and then he comes clean to Howard saying that he's Victor Strand. He's basically the opposite of what he told him before, that he wasn't willing to die in the submarine. But I'm wondering if they're setting up Strand to be the villain in season seven, which I think would be awesome. And then we gotta get to Morgan and Grace. Morgan's in the sub, and Grace was outside the sub, but she heard the radio message from Morgan. She goes inside and they talk. They basically say they love each other, and they talk about what to do, and the radiation, and it's gonna be terrible, and so Morgan sees the gun that Grace brought in. Grace convinces Morgan to commit suicide and she wants to hear Athena, her baby cry. So she wants to join Athena. They hear a baby cry. So they leave the sub and it's actually baby Momo, Rachel and Rufus because Rufus brings Rachel to them because that's what Rufus does. Grace and Morgan kind of don't know what to do because they were gonna end their life and they don't know where to go now. They're by the sub, they're in a dangerous situation, but 
Rufus, Rachel, and baby Momo. Look at that face, she's a cute baby. And then they're saying this is a gift and Morgan feels like Athena might have brought baby Momo to them. Rachel's a walker, they put the walker down. And you know, so a lot of people die in the episode, but not many main characters, which I'm okay with. Some people were pissed and they were expecting some big deaths, but there were some pretty big deaths here. And it was pretty cool. The bombs explode. We see the dust clouds coming towards them and they're like, oh crap, what are we gonna do? So they turn around and hide under the oil tanker. I'm guessing here, Rufus jumps in a car so he should be safe. They just hide underneath the oil tanker between the tires. So I don't know if they're gonna get radiation sickness, but I think they should, but they probably won't. But they also talked about before that they both aren't supposed to be here, which they both should have died, but they're both alive. So that's a sign that Morgan and Grace should be together, raise baby Morgan, and they should be together, at least going into season seven, right? But we'll have to see what happens. This walker doesn't make sense as it's smoking, charred, you know, blown apart on the back, but it's pretty cool. It's a cool effect. Morgan kills the walker. And as he's looking back, you see bombs exploding. So I'm guessing the bombs are exploding further and further, oh, I guess the missiles, the warheads are exploding further and further away. So I'm guessing Morgan and everybody is safe now because it's further and further away. But you know, radiation and everything should be in the air. So we'll have to see what happens next season. And oh yeah, we get a point of view from Alicia in the bunker. We don't see Alicia, we just see this. So Alicia is safe in the bunker. Who's gonna find her? What are they gonna do? We'll have to see. But what's next is the big question I had in a different video before I watched the episode. Are we gonna get a time jump? If we do, are we gonna have an older Charlie, older characters? What's gonna happen with our characters? Is Strand gonna be a villain? How does the CRM connect? Thank you guys, let me know your thoughts. Post your comments below. Season six, episode 16 is a great finale. Stay safe and tell them, Daryl.